How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with a very special Dragon Ball Fighters video for you all today, as today we're going to be taking a look at the matches between myself and Globku, who is also behind the channel TGN Anime. The channel produces tons of quality content and even some Dragon Ball Fighters stuff, so if that sounds interesting to you, I would definitely recommend for you to check the channel out. The links to do so can be found in the description as always. Before we go ahead and get into the match analysis, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about why I decided to do this video like this. So for those of you that don't know, me and Globku live very, very far away from each other. So we were both going into this expecting the connection to be a little laggy at best and a complete lag fest at complete worst. Luckily for us the end frame delay was around 5 to 6 frames so it wasn't the worst uh, but there were situations where it jumped up to pretty high numbers and even one case where we had to call off a match entirely and just and just like reset the game. Because of this I knew there would be a lot of situations in which if I had to restart anything I would have to restart the entire recording and because Globku went out of his way to set this up with me and he made this like a live stream event over on his channel I don't know if he's ever going to actually upload it for the general public or not. Uh, I just didn't want to waste his time or his stream's time. Uh, so, <laughs> I'll be honest, it was just general nerves on my end. I just decided it'd be best to go with something a little safer and a little less out of the moment. You know, I could just go back and watch the replays later, if anything. So yes, I am very sorry that we're not going to get to see it live with my commentary, but... Hopefully you can understand my reasons why I chose to do it that way. And uh, yeah, we still have some interesting match footage to look over because these were some insanely fun matches. So game one of our best of five set opens like a lot of other game ones. You know, we're both playing very defensively. You know, <laughs> it doesn't help that we're getting used to the frame lag, seeing how it would respond to our connections. Uh, in game one of any set like this, you're really just going to be looking for conditioning. You want to see what your opponent does uh, in response to your block strings or any sort of gimmicks that you have. You want to really be looking out for what they know and how they react to stuff. A good example of this is when I have him down in the corner with my Krillin, you're going to see me back up and fire the Key Blast up into the air. I'm and really what he does here uh, dictates what I'm going to do for the rest of the match. You'll see he opts the super dash here and I just block, uh, but for the next time this situation comes up, I am going to keep it in the back of my head that in this situation, he wants the super dash, or at least that's his first inclination. Regardless though, that's not going to matter too much for right now as I am able to open him up with another hit and get into a situation where I can kill by spending one bar for the destructo disc. This is good for me because it keeps Krillin, my point character, not going to be using him for his assist out in front, uh, which is where I I want him to be. Right here we see another strength with my team, I'm able to confirm off of a random super dash with Yamcha assist, which just means I get uh, some more damage out of it and a sliding knockdown, and you can see here that I misread the situation, show my hand a little early, do the same Krillin Key Blast thing, but this time he opts the block, so good play from Globku here. Uh, not playing into my hands so early on into the game. In the moment this does put me into the state of mind where I'm like, oh maybe he knows what I'm going for here, maybe he's seen it before. Uh, maybe it's going to be a little hard to do that. It has me thinking of different options I should go for uh, and losing a bit of confidence in myself and that gimmick. Another area of the game that we should definitely cover here is what Globku likes to go for after a vanish. So you'll see me do a backdash here because it's just one of my favorite options to go for. Uh, because if they press any buttons, you can usually get them with a sweep. You see me attempt that here. But a, after, a lot of times after vanish, what I notice in the set is Globku goes for an air dash in, uh, which covers this option very well in case I go for a sweep like I do here. Uh, so really beautiful. Beautiful play here, he gets the hit on me, uh, and once again, this is going to get me starting doubting myself, like, oh man, after Vanish, I'm in some trouble already. Everything that follows after this hit is both very important in the outcome of this first match, and the outcome of the set as a whole. So what you're going to see is Globku spend a bar to get Goku out and Krillin in, and then he's going to go for the EX spin, which I just have no idea how to deal with, so Krillin gets caught up in that very easily. And then you're going to see Globku go for a very popular mix-up, and one that I fell for a lot throughout the set, and you're going to see countless times from here on out I assure you as he goes into the dynamic punch and then lands and goes for a low right away uh, this was tripping me up a lot throughout the set obviously it's one of those things where you watch it back and you're like man I, I wish I would have blocked those but yeah this game it was really tripping me up so Krillin's going to go ahead and lose uh, his life unfortunately to this low in a very well deserved knockout a little later on in the set I get a sliding knockdown with my Goku and air dash him for some pressure I miss so I just decided to go for a dragon rush because uh, he, one he'd be expecting a hit and two it's super cheap in online environments especially like this. And then I try to follow up with a super, but unfortunately miss the timing. I try to catch him with a classic Dato Doya Yamcha super reset, but Brave TN just comes flying in, dodging all the hits. 
The next clip we have is definitely something I'd consider a scramble situation. I get hit by the beam on purpose because I don't want to take that go tanks assist. I call my assist out because I'm scared of any punishing from the super dash, and then I just go straight into a medium wolf fang fist and EX it right away, uh, just to pick up the knockout on TN and bring it down to just go tanks versus Yamcha and Super Saiyan Goku. But of course, it wouldn't be a Dato Doi special if I didn't lose my best assisting character Yamcha before being able to take full advantage of the 2v1 matchup. At this point in the game, we're both down to one character apiece and both still have our sparkings available to us, but I am able to get him to pop his sparking a bit earlier than me thanks to a vanish combo, uh, which puts him into a sliding knockdown, and then I'm even able to get another vanish combo, but for some reason don't opt to go for the sliding knockdown and instead opt to use my sparking. Definitely a huge blow right here. I probably thought I could kill, but I have to be honest, I have no idea where I got this confidence from. That sparking definitely would have been better used defensively, uh, especially if all I'm going to do with it offensively is drop the combo right afterwards, but I guess that's why they call at the Dato Doi special. A little after that, I am able to get another combo off on him, but it doesn't quite kill thanks to the healing. His sparking then runs off and he gets a combo on me where he is able to spend all three bars and get a hard knockdown, leaving him at zero meters and me at one. Uh, at this moment though, I was panicking because this is Go Tanks on a hard knockdown. Uh, the mix-ups are going to be super real and I'll be honest, at this point, I'm thinking I have one combo left to live. So any one touch could spell certain death for me after this point. So it all came down to the Oki. What was he going to hit me with? I vividly remember at the time thinking he's going to empty jump in low. But I, for, for some reason, for some reason, I held back on my stick instead of down back. And uh, yeah, I got hit. He carried me up. Got, got, I managed to knock me out with the Ghost Kamikaze attack. He had completed his Go Tanks comeback. I was... Man, I was impressed. I was like, oh, this Gotenks is real, dude. I gotta be super careful about him. But there was also a lot of errors on my part, both defensively and offensively, so I was thinking in my head, if I clean those up and walk, be sure to be extra careful of Gotenks, then I should still be able to come back in the next game with a fresh start in my mind. In game two, there's really not too much that I really want to draw a lot of attention to, uh, for reasons we'll get into a little later, but there is stuff in here like me using a lot more delayed getup in order for me to catch certain areas of his strings off, and just mash lights when I get up so that it's my turn on offense, instead of his like it should be. I do that a lot throughout this match and I think it's definitely something that helped me overall. In the mid to late game of game two, I'm able to get his Vegeta with a combo in the corner with Yamcha and you'll see here, even though I'm able to kill with one bar, I do switch out to Krillin because one, Yamcha has a little bit of blue life that I wouldn't mind recovering and two, Yamcha is definitely better in the back than Krillin is. You know, Krillin's assist really isn't bringing too much. Krillin's here for his, uh, you know, st uh, above average beam game uh, out in front and his, you know, mix ups of course. But yeah, Krillin's definitely not here to be in the back. But anyway, as we're winding down game two and coming to a close, his go tanks alone has put a lot of damage onto my team and unfortunately this is where the game hit a 19 frame constant lag. Uh, it was uh, really unfortunate obviously because we had already come so close to ending the game. Uh, you'll see we both drop a lot of stuff and it, overall it's just really unfortunate. I do end up winning this match but uh, with a gigantic asterisk covering the W <laughs> because you know 19 frames nobody's really walking away from this like oh wow what a what a skillful win that was. Uh, but yeah, I do get the win and we do count it uh, for whatever reason. But yeah, we reset after this and luckily this was never a problem again, uh, but hugely unfortunate that even one game had to be decided like this. Game three sees us reincorporate some things from game one, uh, mostly the super dash Yamcha strategy, making it super easy to convert into some damage and a sliding knockdown in the corner. We also get to see some more standalone Yamcha come into play as he gets a nice combo on Vegeta in the corner and sets us up for what I thought was going to be a two bar knockout with Spirit Ball and Destructo Disc, but he actually lives uh, think very quickly I dash in and just click medium and we actually do get the knockout which there which is super important for us he could have healed up a lot of health there and had Vegeta in the back always constantly being a threat but but we managed to get him out rather early we also see something later in game three that I really shouldn't have gone for as much as I did it's a form of Krillin Oki where after you get a knockdown you throw out some key blasts wait a little while and then click down and it basically covers every option they can go for. Super Dash, you'll be able to punish it. Uh, if they just wake up, they have to block it. Uh, yeah, pretty much they either have to block it or risk getting punished by you and whatever option they go for. Uh, I never practiced this. I just saw it online and thought, yeah, that looks cool. And for some reason decided to try it out here. Uh, it never worked. It always failed for me. So I'm not going to bring it up again. But yeah, here you can see me whiff it entirely, uh, mistime it, and eat a punish for it. So that's about how things should go when you just throw out things you see online. And funny enough, Game 3 is also where I stepped up my defense a little bit. You can see me uh, blocking the Gotenks mix up here. Uh, obviously, Glabku is very quick to realize that I'm starting to catch on to it. Uh, so he's able to mix in a Dragon Rush here. Absolutely beautiful from him. He knows that I've caught on at least a little, so he's going to start actually making it a mix up. And uh, yeah. 
very good decision. It catches me here, and uh, now I'm in a bad way. A little later in the game, you'll notice the crown jewel of Dato Doya resets. I hit him with a sliding knockdown, go into a Goku Super Saiyan level 1. Notice the level 3 won't kill, so I intentionally whiff a 3 bar super. I get him to deflect it, and boom, hit him with a dragon rush. Simple as that. Dato Doya school of practice. All it takes is a little bit of whiffing, and uh, you're in there. Obviously a joke. I, I whiffed that on accident. <laughs> uh, eh. Completely just luck that I was able to get a dragon rush off of it and secure the kill. At the very end of game 3, we can kind of see the conclusion between me and the Gotenks mix-up. You can see here that as he goes for it as the final character, I just say, you know what, man, I'm covering all the options. I just opt to spark it. Uh, really, at this point, I was like, you know what, he's going to catch me with that every time. Uh, so I'm just going to have to use my, my once a game sparking on it, which you will see me do again in game 4. It was just, you know, he really had me with this Gotenks mix-up. So, you know, in the moment, you have to kind of make these decisions where you... You see yourself playing poorly and you have to kind of use your sparking activation to cover that up. Heading into game 4 you can see I have him in the corner here and do the standard Krillin stuff that I've been doing all along and this time I choose to rush in because he has been blocking these past attempts and actually he drops his guard gets hit and I'm actually able to convert off of this which is actually very rare so I actually was pretty happy with that conversion that was definitely something that helped me uh, go ahead and get the ball rolling with this game. A little later on, I'm actually able to get his Vegeta into a situation where I can kill with three bars with a Goku Super from the air, a Spirit Ball, and then a very long range Destructo Disc. I always love when Yamcha's uh, final hit of the Spirit Ball goes down and combos into Destructo Disc. It just looks super cool and I'm very happy I was able to pick up a knockout with it. And finally in game 4 you can see once again down to Gotenks and Goku. He goes for the same Gotenks miss up and once again I'm just like nah I'm just I have to spark it at this rate. Uh, so I do and eventually get him into the corner where I kill him uh, with an overhead and that ends the best of five. I take it three to one over Globku. It was a lot of fun and uh, really sad that I couldn't get a like live action ranked video for this. But overall, I do feel like this video turned out pretty all right. Go ahead and let me know what you thought of the video down below and make sure to check out TGN Anime and all of their amazing videos that they do over there. And I'll be down in the comments as always in case you want to ask me any questions about what I talked about in this video today. While you're down there though, if you like these videos and want to see more like them from the channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so that you're up to date on all of the videos I release on this channel. I really do appreciate all the support. Anyway, I'm Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next video.